Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll talk about another entry here. This one now based on one of your past suggestions. What's interesting is that this may be the first time, I don't recall it anywhere else that i at least done, where it's talking about an unidentified submerged object, so a USO rather than a UFO. So again, I don't recall talking about anything like that before, so it was fascinating to come across this past suggestion and realizing this information within it. And it has to do with this, the notion of a legend in Japan either A, being an allegory of some sort, or B, being more on the lines of, let's say, a real encounter but between different peoples of the world, or C, if you take the more fantastical approach, it was truly an encounter between people and an alien culture. So it has to do with this. The legend is called the Usuru Boon Incident, and this is something that occurred way back when, in the 1800s to be exact. So in, in this case, it has to do with something that to this very day is still talked about despite being so many decades later. So let's go ahead, let's share all that information here for you. So what was this Utsuru Boon incident? Well, throughout the decades a lot of information has changed. It's kind of that like that game where you whisper something in one person's ear, they whisper it into the next person's ear, and by the time you get to the end of the line it's changed but the information is somewhat still the same. Same concept here. You would have to go to the 1800s at least with regards to the origins of this incident and it was specifically in 1803 along the coastline something called the Hitachi province along the eastern coast of Japan now again variations of this tale are pretty much all abound it either happened to one group of fishermen or it happened throughout multiple parts of Japan again it's up to you to decide but the main consensus seems to be this information so in 1803 a group of Japanese fishermen those who who were just doing their daily task, trying to find fish, trying to make a living out of it, came across this, what's called an Utsuru Boon, which apparently simply translates to hollow ship. And they found this along the beaches of a place called uh, Horotono Hama. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but Horotono Hama seems to be the way it's described. And so, intrigued, of course, by what they were seeing, it seemed like it was close enough to the beach to be, I guess, actually docked but not close enough in a sense because they apparently when they walked up to it they pulled it in to make sure that they could take a closer look to it and here's how they described it they described it as being very very highly decorated I mean this was something that was uh, unlike anything they've ever seen. I mean, the level of detail, the level of intricateness, the level of luxury, I guess, associated with this was absolutely phenomenal. It was made completely out of redwood, which is, again, another distinct difference from all my other Alien UFOs video because those, obviously, they have to have, they were talking about something involving uh, metallic alloy type substance of some sort. Now in this case, this has to do with redwood. There was some plating also towards the lower half of this hollow ship. Again, that's the little, the little translation of it. And then there was windows on the top half, transparent windows in fact, which was fascinating. I don't know, uh, someone explained to me uh, with regards to it in, in the early 1800s if ships had windows on them. So that would be interesting to hear. But yes, um, it was to them, the closest way they could describe it was they compared it to a large incense burner when, when it comes to the detail, the luxuriousness associated with it. And then they dragged it, again, a little bit on shore because they wanted to see specifically what was inside. What was inside was actually even more phenomenal than what was outside because inside they saw that there was a lot of strange text written in a language that was completely unknown to them. Also appearing into those windows they saw what looked like items of food, items of clothing, and then right there, just pretty much right there in front of them, was what they described as a beautiful foreign woman. So this was someone that either A, again, could be someone from another culture that they found, or B, could be actually something involving an alien. 
the way she was described was 18 to 20 years old, very, very pale complexion, but her most striking feature was the fact that she had this beautiful red hair. And with it, it seemed to have like strands of white fur uh, and fine fabric. I guess, I don't know, I can't try to visualize how that looks as far as the fabric, but it seems like those strands of white fur extended from parts of her red hair as well. She had some cloth of some sort that they described as being very elegant, uh, very beautiful, so something unlike any origin that they would know of. And when she spoke to them, she was speaking in a language that they also did not know. So they were unable to communicate with her and vice versa. Even then, though, they stated that with this weird interaction, running into someone that they could not discern who this person was, let alone trying to communicate with them, she was still very friendly, very courteous with them, but very mysteriously she seemed to be clutching something in terms of a small box. It was called a quadratic box. And this was something that looked like, at least in common terms, the size of a shoebox of some sort. And despite the fishermen trying to see and inquire as to what was in that box, the uh, person, this uh, this 18 to 20 year old female, decided that she was not going to share it. She clutched it close to her to make sure that no one had access to it. Cut to a little bit time later, maybe a couple of minutes, and the fishermen decided that after they saw that there really couldn't be much information, much more information that they could obtain from her and vice versa, they interestingly felt it was best to make sure that they just let her be. So rather than take her in and let's say show her off to the rest of the town or take her to authorities to try to find out what's going on, no, in this case, it looks like they took the higher path. They simply decided, you know what, this person or whatever she was is in a situation where it seems like she's in a foreign land. It's probably best to just have her continue on her ways, just leave her unabated, as if they never actually encountered each other. So that was actually a nice touch on my end, that I felt, because when it comes to something like that, um, the idea that they just decided to just leave her be and just go along her peaceful way, that was very, very touching. So they helped usher this hollow ship straight back into the sea with this woman inside it, this Utsurubunu. And when that happened, that was it. She was simply let go and then wherever this thing went across the sea, who knows. But eventually it just went over the horizon and that was it. She was gone. So no more information about who this woman was, where she came from, what kind of journey she was on, where she was headed more specifically. But that's all the information at least tied to this Utsudabune, this close encounter of, in some cases, of the third kind. Now, with regards to what really happened and and again, there's been so much speculation because after all these past decades, people still can't decide exactly what had occurred. Remember I was mentioning earlier, there's the idea that it's like a mythology of some sort that it was simply a story almost made up in the sense that it's supposed to be portray some things and it's supposed to reveal some kind of I guess lesson with regards to other things then there's the idea that there were truly encounters between foreign lands in this case uh, people from Japan meeting a woman from a culture of another land the idea again that she had a very pale complexion strikingly red hair uh, instantly made me think that it was something someone that was uh, Anglo, someone that, at least according to them, they may not have met before back in the 1800s. So it could have been that as well. Part of that notion also ties into the fact that uh, some of the people, I guess the, the fishermen later started telling their encounter with other people within the town, and some of those people came up with these weird tales, like there was the idea that maybe she was a princess from some foreign land, some foreign culture, and so because of her beauty, because of her um, exoticness, then her husband, who they surmised was a powerful person within that culture, almost banished her whenever she... Um, uh, I guess either A, had an encounter with another man, or B, the husband didn't want that to ever happen because of her beauty, so he banished her himself to make sure that such a thing would never occur, and that within that box, 
whatever she was clutching to protectively towards her was actually the head of either the lover of, of her husband or someone else altogether and then that's why uh, it, it was in this case a very precious item to her that's at least according more along the lines of if you're going with the notion of of it being an encounter between two different cultures and then the third portion again this one having to do with a real alien encounter in this case a USO the unidentified submerged object there's the idea that yes these fishermen truly absolutely met an alien except this was someone either an alien whose actual appearance was that way or an alien that must have changed their her appearance to make it look like let's say more friendlier so that way there was no uh, harsh encounter between the two of them if that's the case then those of you that are into the aliens and UFO world there's there's that notion that yes absolutely they they met between distant lands but in this case not from earth but from an, another planet or that they were actually uh, meeting with someone from a vessel who somehow got stranded within the waters that's why they was known as an unidentified, unidentified submerged object at least temporarily and that they set this alien back free and then that way wherever it went who knows maybe it went back into the skies later on or was able to find its uh, its location somewhere in deep within the sea so that's all the information associated with that too by the way these are some of the symbols that have been tr uh, passed down along the years with regards to the uh, stuff that that was found within this hollow ship and it's a good picture because it compares some of the symbols within other alien and UFO encounters too and you'll see that they all look weird like it none of them look the same they look otherworldly they look like something that would absolutely be within an alien culture of some sort but yes if you wanted to see some of the actual stuff that was within this hollow ship uh, towards the top portion that's where you'll see those symbols too so but that's it that's all the information tied to this Utsuru Buni uh, incident this mythological incident that occurred back into the 1800s if anyone has any more information uh, please post those comments below Hello again there was the notion at the beginning of the video where I mentioned that apparently this stuff happened throughout multiple parts maybe within Japan so if anyone has more information than that that would be interesting to hear it does seem like there was a, uh, a one time encounter with regards to this but if anyone knows other areas that these aliens were found or this woman was found please that would be really good to hear too so alright everybody thanks again as always take care bye